poorest season in wintertime Homer, which is just the uh, locals, and it changes abruptly at Labor Day, where uh, the kind of the shops and whatnot in the uh, in the sort of the tourist areas they all just close up. The campgrounds empty out, and people are gone. And the, the whole feel of the town is entirely different. The conversations in the diners that you hear and whatnot are, are different. And by the time February rolls around, they have a uh, kind of a strong cabin fever thing that goes on, and, it, and it's it's because of the long winter that can be really miserable. Last winter in particular was was not as cold as usual, and so it was kind of melty and rainy and gray and just real yucky all the way up until March when we finally got dumped on with all kinds of snow. But people, you can tell they burn out on it, and so somewhere around in February it just gets kind of difficult. For a team to see what I get here if it comes off. 18 plus hours a day. 18? Yeah, and for a couple of weeks, we're just coming out of it now, it, it doesn't get dark. I mean, it's light enough to read a newspaper outside all night. It never never gets dark. And there's a couple of places in northern Alaska where the sun literally stays up for a couple of weeks. It doesn't go below the horizon for, the, for a couple of weeks. It just goes around the horizon. <laughs> then the opposite in the wintertime is what makes that so hard. I think here, maybe a little further, but this, that, that beam is new, so I think, I think this was the end of the room of the, of the sanctuary. They uh, at times have a uh, really big bell choir, and they, they have a bell choir tradition, and so that, and they kind of designed this chancel to feature those bells. That's what those, that, huh. that table looks like. It's kind of surprising. And uh, <laughs> put a stained glass window on there. How much would that cost? And a couple of people with some means said, I don't care what it'll cost. You know, we'll, we'll make a major donation to it or whatever. So first thing you know, they end up getting a stained glass window um, on there. <laughs> and it turned out to be, a, you know, to be a beautiful thing. Housing potential would be uh, down in this area. Um, this is a, an area that can be cordoned off or divided off with a with this uh, the wall mm -hmm. thing. And people in the uh, church have brought beds in before for like dormitory type sleeping. And then there are two additional um, side rooms that are uh, would be available. Also, this one is used for storage by the uh, Boy Scouts in the community, but there's lots of room, and yeah. this is used for extra meeting space when needed. So there's lots of room. Oh, yeah, you have plenty of space. Too. Yeah. yeah. And, well, you know, like I say, if people, people donate. This is a big area. Yeah, this was the project. They, the original fellowship hall was uh, strictly the room, not counting the solarium, um, just the room here. And then the old kitchen was in here, just a real small little area. Mm -hmm. Now the old kitchen is in use by the community food pantry where a walk-in freezer has been installed. And the, the solarium over there um, was added uh, to the side of the, um, of the fellowship hall to make expanded space. Of course, then they did all the new ceiling and flooring and whatnot in here. We have a, uh, my uh, pastor's Bible study Sunday morning class meets over there. It's really pleasant. And that's the new kitchen over there then? Yeah, that's kind of the... Uh, that's kind of the big, no, no, that, that's a little coffee bar in the corner. The, uh, <laughs> in the kitchen is the big thing to see. That's have a uh, uh, DEC approved uh, kitchen. So you could uh, do dinners and anything you wanted to do? Yeah, right? that they would just open up all of the things that that would, would amount to. And, and by golly, it's quite the kitchen for the church. It really did a job. A little surprise to the project. <laughs> no part of the plan not approved and all the expenses went with it. <laughs> but, uh, wow, kitchen big kitchen. Really a, uh, really a great tool for all kinds of ministry. So th this church has so much when you look at it. Yeah. As far as its facilities are concerned. Yeah, Amazing. they really do. They, they, uh, they had some ideas and they really acted on the project that led to this kitchen. 
probably 20, 25 years long, a, a group of women in the church got a vision for a new kitchen to replace the woefully small little tiny galley kitchen that they've used for all these years. And um, they thought, well, if we're going to do it, you know, let's try to get one that can be department, environmental, whatever, approved and build it all up to code and have all state-of-the-art appliances in here. So they started doing fundraisers of all the traditional kind. You know, we're talking 25 years ago. Meals and room sales and this and that, on and on and on. So that by the time the project started, they had saved enough money, like $70,000, to buy a new industrial dishwasher, to buy all the sinks, industrial refrigerator, the uh, convection stove oven and the gas one, and all of these things. They had saved up enough money to buy all that stuff. So we, that was all stockpiled here waiting hmm. for like a year and a half as the church struggled to get the funding to be ready to install it in here. And, and that's how it was when we got here. It was just a roughed in, roughed in pipes in here with all the appliances out there and no, with no way to begin to pay for the uh, cabinetry, which was enormously expensive too. We're having a...